Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host, CJ. Today, I'm gonna attempt to finish up what started out as a simple upgrade of a kind of boring office PC to a more exciting gaming PC. Now, I'm not gonna do a big recap of part one because I really wanna try to get through this project today. If you haven't seen the first part, you can check it out here or in the link in the description below. It's worth the watch, but a real quick recap, I introduced the project and the almost four year old home office PC we're upgrading, showed the new case for the system, and then pulled the power supply and demonstrated how to very simply and inexpensively custom sleeve the ugly rainbow bright cables. Today, we'll be doing a few more very inexpensive DIY projects to dress up the system even more, such as making a custom backplate for our graphics card, making a cable shroud bar for the case, and changing the color of our memory sticks. Then we'll get the system out of the old case and into the new, along with some additional parts that should really make the whole PC pop. I'm upgrading this system with this MSI RX 580 Armor OC graphics card. This is a few years old, but still a very capable GPU gaming wise, but it's, well, kinda ugly with the back of the PCB all exposed. Nowadays, we're getting used to even budget friendly graphics cards having back plates. So let's make a back plate for this so it's not all naked and stuff. This is another very simple and inexpensive way to dress up a graphics card. All we need is a small sheet of acrylic, an acrylic knife, a coping saw, a hand drill, some sandpaper, and some spray paint. I'm not exactly sure how much all this cost. I just grabbed it out of my garage, but I can definitely say it's cheaper than ordering a custom made backplate for this GPU. So here's how I'm gonna do this. Since most of the work on this I'll be doing in my garage, I'll explain how I'm gonna accomplish this and then edit in a montage of the process. First, I'll measure out or trace out the shape and size of the backplate. I'll use the acrylic knife to score and then snap off the acrylic. I'll use the coping saw to cut out the small notch where the power connector is. I'll also mark where my GPU mounting screws are located. I'm going to drill out the locations of the mounting screws and drill out a pattern of holes as a simple design element. I'll use the sandpaper to both finish the edges of the plate as well as prep or rough up the surface of the acrylic so the paint will adhere to the surface. Now it's time to paint the plate. I'm just going with a very simple and clean, solid matte black for this project. And here it is. I end up only needing two coats of paint and I buffed it out with fine steel wool between coats. Now, I painted the top side of the plate so I could get that nice matte finish. But if you want a more dimensional and glass-like finish, you can paint the back side and then you get a finish like this. Now, you can customize this as much as you want. I was actually planning on cutting out a logo design with my coping saw, but I decided to keep it simple. Something anyone can do with a few basic tools. You can mask it off and do a multicolor plate, add RGB elements, airbrush or hydro dip, whatever's in your wheelhouse. That's the awesome part of custom DIY. Anyway, let's get this mounted and do that. I'm simply gonna attach it with some double-sided mounting tape. First, I'm gonna cut just a few small pieces and then I wanna attach those pieces in the empty areas of the PCB, somewhere where there's not soldering points or surface mounted devices like here and here and here and here. So let's get that done. Okay, 
Now I'm just gonna carefully line it up and press it into place. And that's it. That's it from ugly to not so ugly with a few bucks in acrylic and paint and just a little work. I'm on a roll now, let's keep going. So my office desktop only has a single stick of eight gigabyte A data memory, which worked fine for the system's current role. However, as a gaming system, I'll need at least 16 gigabytes. So I can either buy a brand new 16 gigabyte kit, or I can get on eBay and find a matching stick of eight gigabyte DDR4 2400 megahertz A data memory, which I did for 20 bucks, saving myself almost $50. However, this memory is metallic red and really doesn't match the build color scheme at all. So I need to fix that. There are a couple different ways I can do this, but no matter what I do, I need to remove the heat spreader from the RAM first. So to do that, I'm gonna use my heat gun set to 150 degrees Fahrenheit to warm up the heat spreader and loosen the thermal tape holding it on. If I just try to rip it off cold, I could damage one or more of the RAM modules or the PCB. So let's get that done. I'm just using this very simple plastic tool to carefully pry the heat spreader off. So these heat spreaders are typically anodized aluminum, which these ones are. Now it is possible to strip off the anodized layer back to the raw aluminum and then re-anodize these, ultimately dyeing them any color I want. However, this takes some specialized equipment and chemicals, which I have and can do, but I suspect most people watching this video don't. So again, for these, I'm simply going to clean, prep, and paint them. Now, a layer of paint on the aluminum will reduce its cooling ability, but to be completely honest, this DDR4 RAM running at just 2400 megahertz doesn't really need to be cooled. There are plenty of these kits sold with no heat spreader at all and many with painted heat spreaders. So again, this work will be done in the garage, but this is a pretty simple project. First, I already removed the decals with the heat gun when I was removing the heat spreaders. Next, I'll use some fine steel wool to prep the surface and then clean the surface with some alcohol. I'm also taping off the silver accents because I wanna keep those as well as the back surface where the thermal tape will reattach the spreader to the RAM. And finally, I'll spray on a single coat of paint as thin as possible. Okay, the heat spreaders are done. They came out pretty good. I, there are a couple spots I need to touch up around where I taped off those little silver accents. I can do that with a fine detail brush. I can do that later. But to mount these, to do that, I'm just gonna mount the heat spreader with some of this blue cell thermal tape, and then our RAM will match our system. There we go. Okay, that's it. We're ready to put this PC together. So I just need to pull the motherboard and processor from the old case. Okay, let's take a look at some of the new stuff I got for this. First things first, this Intel stock cooler while perfectly adequate for the CPU is, well, ugly. 
So I got this Cooler Master i71C because it's, well, just not so ugly. And it was only $17. So yeah, some of the stuff I'm going to be adding won't add a bit of performance to the system, but it'll look cool. Let's get this new cooler on. So this cooler does come with pre-applied thermal paste, but you know me, I never use that stuff. Wow, that's thick. Okay, cooler mounted, and yes, this cooler does have a beefier heat sink and a larger fan, so it will keep the CPU cooler, but this i5-7400 four-core locked processor really doesn't need to be cooler. The stock cooler keeps the CPU well below thermal throttling limits, but again, it's ugly, so now it's better, especially when that fan lights up. This is a 12 volt non-addressable version. The AM4 version of this cooler is addressable and slightly more expensive because of that. Now I can install the memory that matches the system beautifully. Okay, now it's ready to be installed in the case, but first, Let's take a look at the next upgrade or improvement we're gonna make to the case. This is a six pack of addressable RGB 120 millimeter case fans. Now, I was initially looking for just three additional fans that were a close match to the three fans this case came with, but when I saw this kit on Amazon, I grabbed it because it was only 36 bucks. That, works out to $6 per fan. Now, I usually don't even find 120 millimeter case fans in the bargain bin at Micro Center for that cheap. Those are usually like eight to 10 bucks and are just basic fans, no RGB at all. Not only that, but this kit comes with a control box and remote. So if these fans actually spin and light up, this is probably one of the best deals I've ever found for PC components. So what are they really and how can they be so cheap? Well, they're Chinese knockoffs, of course. And in, in fact, Jay's Two Cents did a review on a similar kit a few months back. Those were a different set of Chinese knockoff fans, but maybe not. See, what typically happens is that a Chinese manufacturer produces fans for a reputable company like Corsair or Thermaltake. Then that company takes those plans and manufactures the same fan under a different corporate name. Eventually, they get a cease and desist letter from the company that they stole the designs from. So they simply change the name of their corporation, maybe in this case to up here and continue to pump out the counterfeit fans. Shady much? All right, I added a couple things to dress up the PC. Now, let's add something to speed up the PC. I'm obviously not gonna be using that three and a half inch spinning rust hard drive, at least not as a boot drive. For that, I have this two and a half inch A-Data solid state drive, which will speed up boot and load times considerably. But again, the metallic green thing it's got going here really doesn't match the look of the system. So while I can just peel the sticker off, I thought I'd dress it up a little. So I'm gonna replace the sticker with a piece of the vinyl wrap I showed you in part one. All 
All right, so let's get it installed. Okay, not bad. Now you can also see why I decided to sleeve some of that SATA power cable. And speaking of cables, let's move on to the next DIY project. So this is a micro ATX motherboard in an ATX case. So that means we have some empty space down here below the motherboard. Now, typically the board would go all the way down to these cable pass-throughs down here. So there would be no problem with long sections of front panel IO cable showing when you plug them up. So to hide these cables, I made a simple shroud from a strip of acrylic that I can install to run these cables behind and fill in some of the empty space below the board. Let's take a look at how I made this. What I've done is using a sheet of folded aluminum foil, I created a template that I can use to measure and form my final acrylic piece. Again, I'm going to use my acrylic knife to score and then snap my acrylic to size. Now I'm going to use a heat gun to heat the acrylic up and bend it into shape. Then I'll sand the acry acrylic and prep it for painting, which I'll do with the same matte black as the backplate. Now, to mount this, I'm just gonna use a couple pieces of my mounting tape here and here. Then I'm just gonna add a few pieces of the mounting tape on the back of this shroud here that I can stick these cables to to keep them from sagging down below it. Okay, now just gonna mount it in right here. Stick those cables to the back there. Keep them right up and out of the way. There we go. All right, almost done. Just need that graphics card. Man, that looks so much better with that back plate. But I said the PCIe cable would be hidden in this build. So let's do that by adding our final part to this build. And this is a deep cool GPU support bracket. Now, admittedly, this is the one part that wasn't actually intended for this build. I got it for another project with a much larger and heavier graphics card that did have quite a bit of sag, but it ended up not fitting in that build. So I have it and I figured I'd show it to you and get some use out of it. This RX 580 might not need support, but it can't hurt. Plus it hides the cables, it fills in some of the empty space, and cost under $20. Oh, and did I mention it has RGB? Hmm. Nice, finished. Well, with this side anyway, I still have much cable management to do on the back here. I won't bore you with that. I'll just plug in a smooth cut to the managed cables. Then we'll go straight into the glamour shots. Just like the street lights lit this town, like a fire in a blaze, gotta burn it down. Can't be afraid to leave this out. We got this far, don't know how I see danger in your eyes They know we'll burn down the night Come in just like the sunrise You know that we gonna let it away Tonight, we gonna let it away Tonight, we gonna let it
So that's it. It looks great, but the two questions I'm sure on everybody's mind, one, how much did all this cost? And two, how does it perform? Because I essentially built a gaming PC from what, 2017? Well, the total cost was this much. I don't know what that says over there yet because I won't actually do the math and this graphic until I edit this video this weekend, but I can comment on it because I know what I'm thinking I'm going to put over here and what I'm not gonna put over here. What isn't here is the original desktop PC parts I pulled out of that steel case because that was an almost four year old computer. So in my mind, anything that I've had for that long has paid for itself. So those parts, the CPU, the motherboard, eight gigs of RAM and the PSU were essentially free. Now the performance components, what actually made this a gaming PC, the graphics card, the second eight gigs of RAM and the SSD, I know those come in right around $145. If you're a patient and smart bidder, you can pick up a used RX 584 gig on eBay for right around $85. I got the second memory stick for $20.50, which is great considering the cheapest new 16 gigabyte DDR4 2400 megahertz memory kit I could find was $66. And the SSD new is right around $35 to $40. As far as the aesthetic stuff, look, some of the stuff was just too good to pass up here. See what I did there? And some admittedly probably was a little too much. As far as the DIY projects, listen, when you can get results like this GPU backplate or those sleeved cables for how many ever pennies it adds up to over here, I mean, why not? Question two, how does it perform? Well, like I mentioned, this is my son's new actually his first gaming PC, and I still need to add a larger capacity storage drive to the system, so I only have a few games loaded onto the SSD, and I'll say they all performed just as I expected them to. Of course, it crushed CSGO. I mean, the system is still, what, like five years newer than the game anyway? And yes, this is in-app live team gameplay, which is a completely valid way of benchmarking the game without sucking and getting your entire team killed because you're watching your GPU stats and not the game. The next game I tested was Overwatch. And at high graphical preset, the system was balanced as about perfectly as you can get with GPU usage staying between 80 and 100% and CPU usage typically about 10% lower while maintaining some outstanding frame rates. Finally, for Apex Legends, I was attempting to dial in graphic settings that would maintain at least 60 FPS at 1080p. I was presently surprised that my frame rates were significantly higher. And just like the two games before it, the gameplay was very smooth with no discernible stutters or choppiness. So that's it guys. Let me know what you think of this upgrade in the comments below. Are you someone that would have just stuck some performance upgrades into the old steel case? Or would you have gone for even more bling? In any case, I hope you learned something from this. That is why I do what I do. And I hope to see you in the next one.